This is the SDCC exclusive Marvel Legends series, The Hellfire Club, or the Inner Circle of the Hellfire Club four pack gift set. And I picked up this set from Kalel Collectibles. It's a huge, huge box. Let me just show you, turn it around and see what's at the back. It's a nice rendition, Photoshop portrait rendition of the members of the Inner Circle Sebastian Shaw. Emma Frost, Jean Grey, and Donald Pierce as White King, White Queen, Black King, and Black Queen. Very, very cool. It's very seldom I pick up a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive, but this one was an exception. It's a, it's an X-Men uh, set and number of the mutants, and I just had to pick it up. So when you open the gatefold cover, you can see uh, more portraits, the colored versions of the portraits uh, right here. Well, not exactly. They're turning turning to one side as well as here. That's actually pretty cool. You get all four of them in a nice little sort of portrait right here. The inner circle, it says. And then when you open this flap, it reveals the four Marvel Legends figures in a nice diorama of their, uh, I don't know what that is. That's their great room, I suppose. The great room with a fireplace uh, backdrop diorama of the Hellfire Club. And you get Jean, Emma, Sebastian, and Donald. And as well as all the parts, extra accessories, extra limbs right here. You get Magneto's helmet, and you get a book. And on this side, which I almost forgot to show, there is a letter from the Hellfire Club, which I'm not going to do. You can just Google it, what it, what's inside. But you know what? If I try and remove it, I'll probably rip it or something like that, which I don't want to happen. So the set looks absolutely gorgeous. Let's begin with the two gentlemen, the Black King, Sebastian Shaw, and the White King, Donald Pierce. Now, uh, both these figures... Officially, I think they are they're, they should be called new molds. They've got some recycled bits. We'll talk about that later. But in my opinion, I think they should be treated as brand new molds for us. They came with several accessories. Sebastian Shaw is holding one of them, and this is the Hellfire Bible. No, the Hellfire book, uh, and it it has a bunch of scribbles, some graphs. And, here and there, nice Hellfire logo. Uh, it's a nice book, great accessory. And if you look here, there is an indentation where you can put the thumb in, like what I did uh, with Sebastian Shaw. Other accessories include two X-Men memorabilia. These are quite possibly trophies that the Hellfire Club has acquired through their battles with the X-Men. We have Magneto's Helmet, which is in the comics and in the movies, serve as a psionic shield or barrier so that none of the telepaths could read his mind or control him. Uh, this helmet does not fit any of the head sculpts that are given in this set. It is merely an accessory. And I think I don't have my three pack Magneto anymore, but it does look to be the same exact same Magneto helmet that we got from that set, the Family Matter set, except that they forgot to paint that crest on top. Nevertheless, it's a nice set. I just wish they could have molded it in hard plastic because it's not going to be worn. It's just going to be on display, uh, on display on their mantelpiece or whatever. It would have been nice if it were hard plastic, but otherwise the color is great. Absolutely amazing. Very nice. This one was a puzzle. This was a curious thing for me. It was a bit of a conundrum. Why they would put Wolverine's cowl. That's It's usually an accessory for a Wolverine figure when, you know, when if you have an unmasked head sculpt you put it at the back this is the exact same piece we got from the love triangle three pack no idea why they put it here they should have if they wanted to give a wolverine mask they should have made a fuller mask not the drape down like this because they're not going to display it this way they're going to display it like this if they did have it as a trophy so this was pretty useless let's start with Donald Pierce, or the would-be head of the Reavers. So he was with a bunch of mutants in the Hellfire Club. He would eventually 
turn out to be a mutant hater and would form the Reavers. He's not actually a mutant. He is, however, a cyborg. So they gave him these Deadpool weapons. Not entirely sure why they would give these futuristic cable-like uh, Deadpool guns uh, to this guy. But uh, it's okay, I guess. It's, I guess it's nice. Maybe they could have gotten like a... I don't know, a hand that turned into a gun that you could replace the hands with. If you wanted to, you could actually replace his hands with some Dr. Doom hands. <laughs> I know, they're way too big for the figure, but they look great. They look absolutely great. Uh, these cuffs are getting in the way. You could probably remove the cuffs and just add the hands, but I do love these cuffs, these extra sleeves, like pirate sleeves showing off. I do like them. They look way too big in proportion because this is how a hand should look like. But they're they're a little bit big uh, for the figure. And I like it because they're cybernetic hands. They should be big. And <laughs> But I thought this was pretty amazing. I do like it on him more than the regular hands. Now on to Sebastian Shaw, the guy who could absorb energy, any form of energy, and then release it in the form of brute strength. <laughs> it is only fitting that his extra set of hands are fists so we can slug it out with i don't know warpath beat up some x-men with this one so very very cool and both figures are actually the same mold they got the same ascot on them this jacket piece the vest and the coattails and the collar this whole central section that's on this their bodies is exactly the same it's just been remolded in a different color and repainted the ascots are different this is a lot whiter than this one this is a has a little bit of a gray tint to it the arms are exactly the same the legs are exactly the same just painted differently the hips are the same even the under underneath is a it's a white shirt, like what we've seen with the Nick Fury uh, mold or Bruce Banner mold, I, I believe. Because if you lift up the ascot, you can see a provision for the necktie. It's nice of Hasbro to recycle that bit, that bit of body, and just they could save money by just adding uh, this piece right here. Uh, the vest and the jacket piece, they could have a different, totally different new character, totally different new mold, uh, as it were and still managed to recycle some bits here and there. The shoulders seem to be the same as well as the bicep and the forearms. The cuffs are new, recycled hands. The leg pieces seem to be new, and as well as these high cut socks and shoes, shiny patent leather, uh, shoes buckled shoes that they have very new and what's really selling these figures for me i think are these absolutely amazing head sculpts i mean look at these two they got sebastian shaw has his nice little smirk right there well painted face he's devious look right there and then donald pierce look at him just hatching a plan to attack the x-men defeat the x-men the hair pieces, at, le at least this one, the hair piece on uh, Pierce is a separate piece, so it's well painted. There's no smudging here and there. Eyes are nicely painted. Eyebrows, same with this one. This one is one whole piece. They didn't separate the head, uh, the head from the from the hair piece, so it's one molded plastic for the head sculpt and painted beautifully. Hardly any quality issues on the paint apps for these figures which is a shock to me since hasbro is notorious for paint blemishes paint quality control issues on their marvel legends figures but these turned out great i wouldn't be surprised if they repacked or re-released these uh, figure molds into a jason wingard or mastermind okay very cool. And talk about articulation. We'll, we'll do Pierce since uh, Shaw has tighter joints. So the head or the neck is on a ball joint that is on a hinge. You move the neck like this. It's not too weird. The, um, the torso, I believe, has a hinge that goes forward and backward. It has a waist swivel. Yep, it's the same one that we saw in Nick Fury the uh, Captain Marvel Nick Fury, forward and backward, ab crunch, waist swivel. 
The shoulders can go in and out, forward and backward, double jointed elbows, wrists can swivel and go in and out. These fists, yes, they do move in and out. Okay, on to the hips. Hips can do a split, sort of. It's a little tight, the ball joints, but that's fine. Forward and backward, a little bit loose on the thigh swivel, particularly on my Pierce figure. Double jointed knees. Half swivel, which is great. This saves them a lot of money from sculpting and all that. The socks and lower part of the leg, just plug them in right there in assembly. Ball, uh, ball joint ankles. They have the rocker, rocker tilt for up and down. So great articulation, absolutely pleased with these two figures. I don't necessarily need these figures in my collection, to be honest, but they are a welcome addition and I'm Pretty glad Hasbro did release them. And for some size comparisons, here are both of them with the Cyclops figure mold or the Bucky Cap mold. Uh, sounds about right. Uh, Cyclops is about 6'3", and both Donald uh, and uh, Sebastian are supposed to be both 6'2". So yeah, they're almost the same size. I think that it's a good scale. I think Hasbro got it right. And on to the ladies, the White Queen Emma Frost and the Black Queen Jean Grey. These are the figures you are paying for. These figures look gorgeous. I absolutely love them. I have some comments, I'm going to go there later. But overall, I am very, very pleased with these figures and I'm so glad I paid for this set. I got my money's worth. These are the figures I've been waiting for to be released and they look great. Let's start with Jean Grey as the Black Queen under the spell of Mastermind or Jason Wingard. Very, very cool. I love this sculpt. In fact, I think this Jean Grey figure is my favorite out of all the four figures that we got from this box set. Let's start with that amazing head sculpt, makeup perfectly painted. It's got a perfectly colored and perfectly sculpted bun on uh, her hair, that red hair. She's very, very sharp, looking very, very nice. She's got that spiked choker. It's a separate piece. And this wonderfully sculpted, wonderfully flowing black cape. It's not painted or anything. Could use some paint or some wash on the underside, but as it is, it looks great. It's a little shiny bits and pieces here and there, but it should be matte. And I think Hasbro did a wonderful job, good enough job for this cape. Look at this. It's an amazing, amazing cape. Now you can replace this head sculpt. Like I said earlier, Let me pop it off. Hope I don't break it. Okay, with a Celine head sculpt, the succubus Celine, and look at that. And it's a great sculpt as well. I really like it. Makeup again, perfectly painted. Hair sculpt is a little bit on the dry side. I mean, uh, could have used a darker shade of black, but as it is, it's pretty nice. Okay, let me just get rid of this cape so we can see everything underneath. It's a nicely sculpted figure. And again, both figures will share the same mold. We'll talk about that later. Uh, you got her bustier right here. It's a separate piece. I don't think you can remove it. If you do remove it, you're gonna risk ruining the figure. There's nothing underneath, it, underneath but grooves, as you can see. So I'm not gonna risk removing that. It, it's a nice separate piece from the lower torso. Very, very cool. Uh, a lot of these uh, parts, like the legs and the arms, we've probably seen them before. The forearms and the hands are definitely the same. She does come with an extra pair of fists, extra pair of hands that are fists. And another pair of hands, if I can find it, that are gripping hands right there. Not sure why they would add that. I don't really need Jean Grey as a black queen to be having fist hands and all that, but it's a nice addition. She does also come with a whip, which we've already seen. This one is a nice touch. Yes, it, it, we've seen her in the comics with a whip, but 
maybe Hasbro could have remolded it instead of the grappling hook whip. A little bit lazy on Hasbro's part, but that's asking for too much, I suppose. They've already given us so much from the set, but this would have been nice if it were a different kind of whip. And because it's made of a even softer PVC material, the handle kind of looks like something else. Anyway, we're not gonna get to that. Articulation for this figure, again, head is on a ball joint, that is on a hinge. You got a ball jointed upper torso, ball hinge shoulders go in and out, forward and backward. The shoulder bicep mold is absolutely brand spanking new. Torso is new. The lower torso and pelvis are absolutely new. Uh, I believe the hips are also new. These thigh pieces, they're on a swivel. Hips are on a ball joint. Hinge, elbow, go swivel up and down. Wrists can go up and down and swivel. Double jointed knees that still have the peg holes. And then uh, you can still see, yeah, you can still see the pegs. And they have, they are the soft, they're the soft kneecaps or they're soft knee joints. So yes, the that what we've seen with the previous Storm figures and previous Emma Frost figures, uh, from the puck wave and all that it's 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 a little bit of these jelly knee syndrome which kind of sucks and then they've got some high heeled pumps for feet rocker pivot and up and down motion these are what we got from the uh, marvel now emma frost which will show off later so very very nice one thing i do like about this mold if i may if i can just put everything back one thing i do like about this new hip sculpt and this is was very important to me this was the first thing i checked out the gluteus maximus area and her hips right here they form a very nice silhouette there's not a lot of gap or gapage or whatever uh, between the this part of the butt and the contour of her butt on her lower garment. And I love that. I love that it's almost a seamless sculpt. It's a little bit of a gap right there. Let me take a look at Emma. Same with Emma Frost. By the way, if you're wondering why I have her pose like this, she should be holding a wine glass. If that pose looks very familiar, you probably have the trading cards, the Jim Lee X-Men trading cards, which have her in this pose. That's where I got it from, okay? So Emma Frost and Jean Grey both share that same hip. And I show you what I'm talking about. If you look at the Jean Grey figure right here, you can clearly see how much gap there is between that hip and those butt, uh, the contour of her butt. And this one fixes it. And I really, really like it. And when we look at the Emma Frost figure, since we'll talk about Emma right now, doing Emma Frost, uh, I think it's a major improvement from what we've seen right here. Right here, this one actually was already an improvement. It's very, very nice, but you still have that gap right there. Uh, even if they re-sculpted that uh, hip piece, they did a better job with this one uh, than, than this one because this one still has some, look at that, some outlying sculpt on her butt. And it doesn't, it's not flattering when you have her posed this way, whereas this one, it just flatters the figure nicely. And look at that. Almost seamless, a little bit of gap. That's fine. And that's something we've clearly seen Hasbro do with the Storm figure. Albeit the Storm figure is the most perfect sculpt, in my opinion, uh, of, a very, uh, of a bigger thighs and a more curvilinear uh, bu uh, buttocks area. I think they did a wonderful job with this new mold as well. Moving on with the discussion, let's go to Emma Frost. Uh, I actually thought this was going to be my favorite figure, but the Jean Grey figure is my favorite. And one of the reasons um, I can see is if you look at how her lower legs are painted, these are supposed to be boots. And I think it's way too shiny. Not complaining too much. I'm just nitpicking. I mean, if they, if Hasbro can still improve their figures, I'll give them suggestions. It's a little too shiny. I thought maybe they could have used this kind of paint uh, on it, but what they did was they molded uh, the plastic in this glossy white type of color, and it doesn't match the boots. 
uh, doesn't match the this part of the garment, and it certainly doesn't match her upper garment and, and lower bikini. Uh, it's a small issue. Maybe Hasbro could have painted it white, but knowing Hasbro's notoriety uh, for quality issues, using the white paint apps, I th yeah, I, this is probably the more prudent way of doing things, just molded it white plastic so we don't have any trouble. So it's the exact same mold, even the bustier is the same. They have a different kind of cape for this Emma Frost. This is the fur, uh, the cape with the fur and the gem, which is very accurate to how she looked like in the comic book. Very nice, no wash though, would have been nice if there's a little bit of wash on the underside, but yeah. And same things that I mentioned about that mold applies to this mold. One thing we will note is a new head sculpt. Well, it's an old head sculpt, but just painted in a different way. It kind of feels like it's a new head sculpt because of how the makeup and the eyes are painted. But we've already gotten something very similar. This is from the Marvel Now Emma Frost, which I've shown earlier. And as you can clearly see, the hair has been molded in a different shade of blonde. This is a little bit more of a darker type of yellow. This one is a brighter shade of yellow, which I think is more comic book accurate. And it's the exact same mold. And if you look closely, they've just painted it differently. I believe the eyes have been painted a little bit, like a two, three millimeters two millimeters farther than where they're supposed to be. They should be a little bit closer to each other like this than like that, but that's fine. Also, the makeup they've added on her eyeshadows and the way her lipstick's been painted make her look a little bit more sinister with this head sculpt than this. This one is kind of a girl next door type of head sculpt. This one is like, you don't wanna mess with her type of head sculpt. The skin tone on both figures are different. This one is a lighter shade of, of flesh, a little bit of a pinkish tone, same sculpt. There's nothing underneath there. Uh, this one is more of a tanned type of flesh tone, both equally good. And so for some size comparisons, here are both queens together with their other alter egos. You have Jean Grey from the Love Triangle three pack. You have the exclusive Emma Frost right here, the Marvel Now Emma Frost. And again, you have the Target exclusive uh, two-pack Storm. So paint apps aside, or the color, the, the plastic that they used for Emma Frost's boots and all that. And personally, I thought that the boots should have been much shorter. Like for instance, uh, the Black Queen, when we first see her, her boots were laced up and they were just below the knee. Eventually would evolve and grow higher and higher. Even Emma Frost, uh, I, it, it did go up to this length. Even uh, Jean had, in some uh, artist rendition, they would go up to this high, but the perfect length would be mid-thigh right here. And they could have easily put that rogue uh, flap on the boots, that's the probably the most ideal type of boots that we should have seen with this one. However, I think Hasbro decided to respect uh, some of the guidelines that Disney had. The figures should not look too tacky or too suggestive. And as such, they tried a go around having just this much skin exposed uh, beneath the bikini. And I think it's, it's a good middle ground. But setting those things aside, they're minor uh, issues for me. I think the major issues for these two figures are, like what I mentioned earlier, are the rubber knees, the jelly knees, because it is literally impossible to have them standing right now, speaking to you for two minutes and not toppling over. You can clearly see behind them, I have the amazing Yamaguchi stance just supporting them. It would be impossible for them to do this without those stands. And as such, maybe I could recommend to Hasbro that maybe you should start using uh, these legs by Emma Frost. The knees on these on this figure, the knees and the legs on these fig on this figure is actually a, ha a lot more stable than the, the predecessor legs of uh, the, from the previous Emma Frost or Storm figures that we got from the Puck Wave. And you can clearly see she's standing on her own without any support. And it's this, it's literally the same feet 
And you can see here that even with the stand beneath, behind her, the legs are starting to buckle. This one, they're perfectly straight. I was going to suggest that they use the storm legs, but then the proportions wouldn't be the same. Uh, it, the feet is, would be too small and it would be nice to have some pinless joints for the legs, but I think if they would use this, this kind of legs, they would have to remold it and just do another pinless leg mold. Now, having said all that, I'm pretty sure that Hasbro is going to recycle these figures because we have a new mold for the chest, for the torso, for the hips, and for the upper arms. And I wouldn't be surprised if they repacked Jean Grey in a retro carded uh, version with a probably lighter skin tone, a lighter shade of oh, on her hair. And I'm hoping if they do that, they would replace the legs with this one and just sort of give us a different mold. Or they could probably repack her as a two-pack with Mastermind or Jason Wingard, which I, I don't think is going to happen. I think the, the, the easiest way to recycle these is to repack both figures as uh, either the regular Marvel Legends box uh, figure as a Walgreens exclusive or whatever, or a retro-carded... Figure. I think that's the best way to do it. I think they'll do it with it. They could do it with this one, but I don't know. Um, I'm thinking they're probably going to repack the same figure, but I'm hoping they could hold off repacking it this year or next year and give it like two years and then repack it with these new legs, with new knees and all that. And you'd have a better looking Emma Frost and Jean Grey as White Queen and Black Queen. And so some final thoughts on this set. This set is an amazing set. Uh, this is probably one of the better San Diego Comic-Con exclusives or PulseCon exclusive or whatever box set exclusives Hasbro has ever come up with from the Marvel Legends line. Sure, it has some shortcomings. As I pointed out earlier, nitpicks of mine, very, very minor uh, comments, minor negatives on this set. Each of these figures are a worthy addition to any X-Men or Mutant or Krakoan shelf of Marvel Legends you have in your collection. And for those of you who have already given up on getting an Emma Frost or a Black Queen Jean Grey, maybe even perhaps a Goblin Queen Jean Grey in the future, don't lose hope. We got the set. Hasbro has done some amazing fan service with this set and I couldn't be happier. So with that, I'm going to give this set a 10 out of 10. Absolutely pleased with it. Just an amazing, amazing set. Best of luck to everybody hunting this down. I don't think you should pay more than $150 for this set. I think $100 to $150 if, if you don't live in the U.S. I mean, for those, uh, for those of collectors who, who are going to get this through hobby shops, through secondary markets... I think $100 to $150, that should be the price range. And $150 should be the ceiling for this price. So there you go, folks. Hope you've enjoyed my review of the convention exclusive or Hasbro exclusive Hellfire Club Inner Circle set. Let me know in the comment section what you think of this set. Do you agree with me? Do you think this set is a pass or is it an absolute must have? Hit me up in the comment section and as always, hit that notification bell so you never miss out on any of my latest video reviews. If it's your first time here, please subscribe. And if you want to help support the channel, please check out my Patreon account. There is a link in the description box below. Any form of contribution will be greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching.